So we've got an in-state rivalry that's uh, been more competitive in the past than it looks to be right now and certainly wasn't last year. Uh, Michigan State comes in, I checked it today, 105th in yards per play, so they don't necessarily pose much of a threat against what could be termed the best defense in the country, possibly. And so your initial thoughts about this one. I, I think this is the one that Michigan really gets them. I really I do. Uh, last season, you know, we thought, okay, maybe Michigan could blow them out here big time. But I think this is the year they do it, and I I think they are motivated to. Um, and I, I I'm looking at a thirty point win here. I'm the lines at twenty four and a half, and I'm I'm looking at a thirty point win here, maybe more. Michigan's rolling; they're peaking at the right time. And you know, I when I talked to you in the preseason. Uh, or maybe it was week one. I think it was preseason. And we, we talked about Michigan. My preliminary thoughts were, well, I don't really feel like they have that much to go as it relates to development. So I'm curious how it will relate to them building momentum as the season progresses. But they didn't start as hot as we expected them to uh, against the non-conference competition. Now they dominated. They're one of maybe the only team in the country to win 20, uh, win all of their games by 20 plus points. But nonetheless, uh, you know, they didn't roll Bowling Green. Uh, that was just a 31 to six. I know that feels like they didn't, they really didn't roll that in that game. Um, but uh, nonetheless, so I, I think they're starting to peak here and the way that they've played against Rutgers, the way that they played against Maryland or not Maryland, excuse me here, but um, Indiana here. And then moving forward, they'll play Maryland. But I just think Michigan state's going to catch them at the wrong time. A uh, perfect storm for Michigan to destroy them. And frankly, uh, prefer these rivalry games to be close, but uh, things have been going downhill for the Spartans since Mel Tucker's allegations came out and then he was fired and it's not looking better. And Frank, I don't really like Harlan Bennett, to be honest, either. I, you know, as a as a head man of a team, uh, I don't think he says the right things in the press conferences. Don't know what it looks like behind closed doors. And there's a reason he's been a position coach for a while, but he's a good guy. And I know that. And so there's that. But good guys don't win big games. Well, it, it seems to be a pattern when programs get into difficult situations, controversial situations where a head coach has to be dismissed because of off the field conduct. And I can think of a handful like this, that they typically turn to somebody who is very much entrenched in the program. Somebody who bleeds that school's colors, of course, Harlan Barnett, is I believe a graduate. He yeah. was a outstanding player there whom I remember watching on a regular basis and uh, has been an assistant there for quite some time. And so, you know, they're, they're placing it in his hands. Uh, I doubt if he has any kind of real shot to keep the job sure. long-term, they're going to try to go out and try to make amends of their, their last decision and go national again, I would think and try to go uh, for the gusto. Let me ask you this, uh, Nelson, in regards to this rivalry compared to the other rivalries, which I would think is just Ohio State. I know Minnesota is technically a rival uh, yeah. with the, uh, the uh, it's not the Paul Bunyan's axe, it's the little, little brown, brown jug. jug. Thank you. Yeah. With the, the scores of every game on the jug, that, that doesn't get played every year. So I think that lessens <laughs> the rivalry, of course. Uh, how would you differ playing Michigan State, not on the field, but in terms of the animosity in the fan base, Michigan State versus Ohio State? You know, that's interesting because Michigan fans do not interact on the daily basis that they do with Ohio State fans, yet they still value that rivalry more than they value the Michigan State rivalry. That being said, uh, bragging rights do matter in the office, you know, going to work wherever you might work, whether you work the construction site, the office, you work at a restaurant, whatever your industry is, you know, it does matter because those are the things that people talk about at the water, water cooler, you know, and I don't like to downplay this rivalry, but and it definitely isn't as big of a rivalry as the Ohio State game. And, and that has something to do with the level of success that has been there between the two programs throughout the history. If there had been that sustained level of success, I think Michigan fans would care about it more. Um, but in a year like this, I think Michigan State fans are just wanting it to be close. I don't think they're, you know, no one I've talked to is expecting to even have a shot in this game. 
And that mindset, you know, I don't know. I think there's some delusion that either Michigan or Ohio State fans will have going into the game either way, no matter how either team is playing. It does not ever feel that way with Michigan State and Michigan. It doesn't feel like when one team is really good that the other team steps up their game, at least how it's been since the beginning of the D'Antonio era. It just hasn't happened like that. Uh, so I think the level of appreciation for the rivalry is there. I don't think the animosity is to the same degree. So nothing concerns you on Saturday. You know, I think Michigan could overlook Michigan State a little bit. And the Spartans have had parts of games where they've looked good. Uh, coming out against Rutgers with a 24-6 lead, Rutgers is not a bad team. And so, hey, you they blew that game completely. They collapsed. But there's something there. And if there is a time for them to get motivated to play a game uh, without their former head coach uh, under Harlan Barnett, Maybe that um, maybe that's this game, and I think it would be. I don't think uh, there's any other game on their schedule that they'll get up and play for, especially at home in a night crowd. So if they jump Michigan early and surprise them, could stun them. We've seen it. It's happened. I mean, the Indiana game, Michigan's first two possessions, they did not look organized. They looked like a mess, and then they went on to score on their eight consecutive drives to close out the game, uh, seven of which were touchdowns. So, you know – there's a possibility that Rutgers goes down, scores a quick touchdown, uh, plays some good defense for a little bit, hangs in there for a little while, and then again, Michigan pulled away. So if Michigan State can keep from getting pulled away from and just sort of hang in there, there's a shot. Uh, Kane Hauser now coming in gives him a different look at quarterback, and he played pretty well against Rutgers. They lost, uh, but you know, I don't think he's got the requisite experience to come out and win a game this big. So even if Michigan State does give Michigan their best, I don't think it's enough, and I still think they lose by double digits. Hauser was a top 10, roughly top 10, I think ranked 11th as a, a quarterback in the 247 rankings at least, or whatever uh, you want to use rivals or whatever. The, the service, they're all about the same in regards to the rankings that I saw. Uh, that's what popped into my head, though. He was like 225 in the nation. So he's a pretty highly regarded quarterback coming out of high school. So we'll see what he can deliver with uh, the spotlight on him for the first time. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it comes to the, def the defensive side of things, too, for them. The issues at quarterback, if you can just get some consistent play with someone who's not going to turn the ball over, that's all, about all you got to ask for. Carter is a great running back, and people are overlooking him as a back across the conference, I think he takes a step next year if he stays with the program uh, and could be, you know, one of those near the top guys if they really make running the football the important thing that I think they should in a rebuilding year. So it's going to come down to how the defense plays and not turning the football over. Special teams will obviously have an impact, but, you know, I, I just I think Michigan in all three phases are better uh, than Michigan State. And whether or not they get stunned early, I don't think it's going to make a difference. Is there anything that uh, Michigan's dealing with right now in regards to injuries or any other storylines? I caught some of uh, Tim Harbaugh's news conference today, but I didn't see anything along those lines. Not really. I mean, I'm trying to rack my brain here, but I'm, I'm thinking and I don't, you know, there's no one that's a crucial player that's going to be missing any time here. I'm trying to think if there's anyone with something lingering, but I don't think so. I mean, most, this team is getting healthy right now that secondary got healthy uh, going into the Minnesota game. And a little bit before that as well, they were starting to get some guys back. So Mason Graham though, uh, along the defensive line, still dealing with a, a huge wrap on his hand from a, an injury he suffered a few weeks ago, but he's been back playing and he's played very well. It doesn't look like it's hurt him at all. So I don't think there's anyone that really that they've lost or, you know, maybe some some depth pieces, but I'm just, again trying to rag my brain. I don't think there there are any injury concerns. Uh, Khalil Mullings missed the game on Saturday. Yeah, Donovan Edwards. There, it can't be a coincidence that every time they hand him the football, he can't get more than three yards per carry. Like this has been going on the whole season. I know he doesn't have a ton of carries, but again, another nine carries, twenty yards on yeah. Saturday, and this is a guy that averaged like pushing eight yards a carry and just had that phenomenal run. I don't know that he got the credit nationally that he earned down the stretch 
coming in for Blake Corum, having the game that he did against Ohio State, Purdue, mm-hmm. TCU, and then this season, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, I it's hard to say because he had some injury uh, issues in fall camp, which were kept very quiet. He barely played to begin the season, and now he's starting to come back and play a little bit more, and he just does not look like he got the reps that he's needed to early in the year. And I don't know when he'll return to form. Um, I'm sure it will happen, and maybe at the right time. It just happens to be late in the season when you need him the most. But Edwards is an explosive runner, and I just have not seen the vision and explosiveness that he's had. He hits the hole. It just seems like he's kind of running straight ahead. He doesn't really you know, take use the patience that he had last year. And the, I'm, I'm, again, not sure – of any of the injury specifics. That's the rumor is that he had an injury in fall camp, did not play very much. And we just don't know beyond that. So he's not, not back to form. He did not look that way last week. I thought this was going to be the week that he had been playing enough that he sort of stepped in against a very bad run defense at Indiana. And it turns out Michigan ran the ball. Okay. But their passing game was what was really working. So, but the Hoosiers are just, yeah, you know, that's a that's a brutal team. To, you know, that's that's just rough. What's going on there, especially on the defensive side of things, and switching your coordinator around on offense midseason is just a mess. So, uh, but nonetheless, yeah, Edwards, he's healthy at this point. It's just going to be a matter of when does he get his feet under him the way that he had before. Is there anything Nelson wrong with this football team? <laughs> you know, kicking game. I think that's that's okay. got to be it. I think it's got to be James Turner's consistency in the kicking game we've seen him miss a couple he's been generally pretty good uh but you know he's a preseason Lou Groza and I just I don't think I mean I don't think he's a shot at the award he just he hasn't looked great his range I don't think is great he's just been okay so if there's a way to put Michigan in tough situations it's to keep them out of the red zone and make you know make them kick field goals or if you get them in the red zone make them kick field goals and just uh, try to stop them from getting touchdowns, which they've been nonstop getting, especially, I mean, their third quarters have been just incredible uh, this season, which is a crucial part of the game. Um, and we just haven't seen them have to play close games yet. So I don't know if he has the clutch gene. We'll find out eventually. Uh, I didn't do too much of a deep dive about his time at Louisville. It's hard to find stuff like that about a kicker, uh, you know, but yeah. Yeah. The only uh, number that sticks in my head, uh, when he transferred was 20 of 21 last year. Yeah. And I've, I, as far as I understood, I don't, I'd have to check, but he did not kick very many long field goals. They didn't ask him to Louisville. Wasn't very good last year either. So, you know, they didn't get a ton of scoring opportunities. All right, Nelson, appreciate you being here. Nelson Hubble with uh, maize and blue review on rivals. There you see the destination on the banner. So check out Nelson's work, get yourself set for Michigan, Michigan state. It may not be much of a game, but read in uh, to everything that Nelson has concerning the maize and the blue. All right, Nelson, appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Thanks for having me again, Mark.